Okay, so hello and welcome back to another uh, video on my channel, but in this one it's going to be quite a bit different, as you can see. Uh, in the background I'm going to be having a me playing Wizard of Legend, which is one of my new favourite games, and I'm going to be analysing it and telling, well just talking about different aspects of the game, and then in my upcoming videos I'm going to be making actual tutorials on creating parts of the game. Now, we're not going to actually end up creating the game, because as you can imagine that's going to be a... Uh, you know, that's, that's quite quite difficult considering it took the devs at least over two or three years to make this game. So, because um, the Kickstarter was two years ago and it just came out. So, yeah, it's it's been, it's going to take a long time. So, I'm, it's not going to look anywhere near as polished. Obviously, I can't even do pixel art really anyway, so it's going to be very minimalist. But I'm going to make all the core mechanics so that if any of you are actually good at 2D art, you can actually, you know, make this. And this is just covering the main aspects of a game or what makes a good game. Now... Uh, this is all pre-recorded footage and I'm going to be doing a voiceover, so let's get into it. So, here's the home screen. Now, uh, as you see, just like any other home screen, we have the normal options like single, two-player, whatever, credits, options. So, in the first tutorial, I'm going to go into creating just a normal menu. Maybe not with... well, now we'll do credits as well. We'll do credits, options, all the, all the other stuff. Um, that's not too difficult to add, and obviously we can add to the menu over time if there are other settings we want to add, because we, we won't add like audio in our first one. But anyway, once you click single player, you spawn into the game, and you're in a kind of hub area where, um, you know, just testing, training dummies, whatever. But the first thing you notice is that um, the UI is very simple, and it uses up barely any of the screen, but it's everything you need to know, and that's, that's one uh, main aspect as well. If you look at the top left, health and, health and mana. It's not actually mana. That's one thing that is kind of deceiving. Um, in this game, you don't actually have mana. Blood blue thing is your like kind of ultimate charge, and that'll go into that. Um, if you look at the bottom left, it tells you the abilities and what keys they're on. That's obviously helpful. Saying you know you got your left click, space, right click, Q, and there's two slots next to it, which is a uh, E and R. But E and R you get later on as you do a run. It's a, it's a roguelike game. I should mention that. So obviously with roguelikes, uh, you kind of go in, fresh start, you play. You might progress a tiny bit, but when you start again, you kind of uh, start again. You still unlock different things, like for example, unless you unlock new spells and relics, but they're not flat out stronger than each other. They're just different options which are stronger when they're linked together. Now, as you can tell, with Vite, it, it's uh, got the same kind of style as Binding of Isaac and you know just how it works. It's that kind of roguelike game. I mean, obviously, there's, there's limitless roguelike games, um, and I am a fan. Um, now. As you see, it, the combat is very fast-paced. As you enter most rooms, there's pretty much enemies in every room, and obviously there are only a limited amount of enemies in the game, but there's still enough to actually like make it feel different. Um, one really cool thing, which is only visual, but the way they spawn enemies in this game is they don't just have them always standing in the room. Some of them are standing in the room. But when new enemies spawn, they don't just pop into existence. An actual card appears with them on. Well, a card appears, flips over with them on, and then the card turns into the person, which... I think it's a really cool effect that we can make. Uh, obviously, like if you made your own game, you wouldn't want to rip this off straight, you know, from it because that would be kind of copying. <laughs> but I'm going to be covering, you know, how a game would go about making its mechanics. As you see around the map, also there's like just breakable things. Some of them give you gold, some don't. So obviously, you can have like a drop rate chance on them. Um, there's also chests which give you these gems, which you see at the bottom. I've got golden gems. Uh, the gems you don't spend during your run, you spend them afterwards to unlock like um, cosmetics or spells or relics. Um, and then your gold is used in the run to buy like temporary items that you get just for the run. Um, and every time you enter, you start off again with zero gold. Um, so as you see, I have taken four different electric abilities, but the, the point is there's uh, four, well, no, there's actually five different elements. There's a sixth element, which you only get when you complete the whole game once. So obviously that's like a kind of reward for completing the game. And I haven't yet done it. I've only played a few hours of the game. Um, and I haven't really unlocked like the perfect relic and spell combo yet. I'm still just, you know, progressing. Um, obviously one other thing that they do is they have uh, element advantages. So even though the enemies are only ever fire, um, water, or earth, electric is good against the ice guys as well as fire. As you see, it has a little like orange, which is like meaning fire, and then it has an up, which means it's doing more damage than normal. Obviously, if I was using water spells against these guys, it wouldn't be doing as much, and so on. So obviously, we'll incorporate some kind of like um, element advantage system. And then some enemies are just neutral, where they don't have like any preference. Um, as well as having the normal kind of enemies, there are the after, there are often uh, the big strong enemies. They're not bosses, they're kind of like mini bosses, which like there's a golem guy here, 
He's not like that tough to kill, but he's a lot more tough than the normal ones. Another thing is, earlier on I walked past this green guy, and now I'm at this person which is uh, purple on the map, as you see the arrows pointing to where they are. You find four of these throughout each like level of the dungeon, and they're all different. Wait, actually, no, sorry, you find three of them. Um, the green one is a merchant, which means, you know, you just spend gold and you get an item. It could be, like, an instant consumable, or it could be a, like, relic that you keep. Uh, relics in this are items which, you know, just do something. that There's no set thing for what they do. Like, I went, you go into the dungeon with one relic, and you can buy more as you go through. So you can get relics that do, um, you know, bonus damage for an element, or, like, give you move speed, or whatever. There's so many. Um, now... <clears throat> While I'm at this part in the video, uh, as you see, I am fighting a, not just a mini boss, this is like a proper, it's like a big mini boss. Because the real bosses, there's three of them in the game, and they're called the council members. Th this is just a normal boss. Depending on how good your build is, you can actually kill these guys really easily. Though, because there are different ones, they're better at different things. There's a rogue one, which splits off to go invisible. Um, and by invisible, I mean cloaked. Like they're not they're not actually completely invisible. You can still see them a bit. So you could either do that effect with a shader or just with like transparency. Um, transparency is probably a lot easier just to do is for what for the sake of this. Um, and then once you've defeated the boss, you get a chest and you go to the next part. And how the game is built is there's like it, it chooses the three orders of elements randomly. So you might get ice, fire, earth, or earth, ice, fire, or whatever. And it gives you two kind of default zones of that. So I've got ice, and then this. So I've got ice one, ice two, and then you go against the ice boss. Then it might be fire one, fire two, fire boss, earth one, earth two, earth boss. And if you do complete all of that, then you fight the final boss guy, who's like kind of like the overlord mage, overpowered person. But if you defeat him, then you obviously you unlock the new like tier of spell, like the new spell things, and it's just really cool. Obviously, that's a reward for you know, doing good. Um, one way I've seen people like beat the game is by just have being really lucky with what they get. Um, so as I was mentioning, there's the green guy who's the merchant. Then there's purple ones, and purple ones are to do with your spells and uh, I think it's just spells actually. Um, so for example, you can unlock new spells to go in your E and R slot, and you only get them during the run. Keep that in mind, like the temporary spells just for the run, but they do help you a lot. Um, keep in mind, there's no mana cost, so you can just spam. But obviously things have cooldowns, so I'll have to make a cooldown system, which I've already done in my game, so it shouldn't be too difficult to incorporate. Um, as you see here, also another thing we could do is like, you know, traps on the floor, um, destroying objects that drop loot that you go and pick up, having loot fly towards you, smashing pots, you know, like, there's so much in this game that's still simple enough for me to do, obviously not to the same level of polish, but like, to cover. And there's lots of things in this game you might want to know how to do. For example, like tile mapping, you know, the sprite, like um, going between the sprites, depending on how you're moving and where you're aiming and stuff. There's so much to it. Um, and I'm going to obviously do a video videos on this. So the first video will just be on the menu. Then I might do a video on, you know, setting up a sprite and getting it to, like, change the direction it's facing and all this and that and all the other stuff. Um, then... Uh, for the rest of this video, obviously, I'm nearly at the end of the part two of the um, run. One really good thing about this game and other roguelike games is once you die, you can just go back in again. It's really fast-paced. You're not sitting around waiting. That's one benefit to the game. Like, uh, Also, yeah, we'll show a mini-map system like this when you press M and it toggles it. Um, I don't actually know, just I've never done it before, like how you do a mini-map system where parts of it unlock as you explore, but I'm sure that's like simple enough to do. Uh, I'll be able to figure it out. Uh, or just look it up if I really need to, but I'm sure I can figure that out. Um, one other thing is we need to do like little encounters where if you enter a certain area, walls come up and you're forced to fight until the enemies are all dead, and then you uh, can leave. Now, one thing to note is I haven't actually checked. I might check uh, before the end of this video, but this game, I didn't look up to make sure it was made in Unity. There's no need for it to be made in Unity for us to made in, make it in Unity. You can make any game in anything. Okay, that's technically not true. You can't make like... Um, a 3D game in Game Maker, for example, but you know what I mean. Like most game engines, you can make any game in, or at least a replica of it, or whatever. Now, I'm not doing this tutorial series to, you know, make f so that you can, you know, copy this game. Obviously, making a roguelike isn't a copy, but I don't want you to like just make the exact same spells and the exact same system and the UI look the exact same. I'll be doing that, showing you the set, like how do we make something just like this. But you should do it, you know, with your own assets and stuff. And obviously, I'm gonna have to make my own assets. Um, also, one of the things is there's portals which take you around the um, map to the places you've explored. So, 
when you find a merchant or a whatever whatever you can teleport to those guys now the electric build that i've got here is actually really strong and i can i can actually kill these bosses extremely quickly which you know i really like this electric build i've also taken a relic which increases electric damage and i've got like bonus chance to like stun enemies so it's pretty good now we're coming on to an actual boss, which, you know, is a bit more intense. Um, you have to actually dodge stuff, otherwise you're just going to die. Now, yeah, I did get hit in this. I didn't do a perfect run, but it was pretty good. Um, so as you see, walk in, the boss spawns. They've got their own dialogue. Obviously, I'll, add a, I'll show how to do a dialogue system like that, where there's the, the enemy or the person you're talking to, and then your, like, image on the other side. Um... Now these boss fights, obviously, they have kind of like predetermined move patterns. It's just a case of like how they use them on you. So obviously, we'll make like a kind of boss battle. Like it's just maybe one like but simple boss battle with simple moves. Um, and obviously, like the um, health bar at the top for the boss. Maybe even yeah, showing the combo system. Like just everything. I'll, I'll cover everything. Um, obviously, I'm, the reason I'm doing this video today is because I've not really got much time to do a proper tutorial video so I'm just doing this quick like um, voiceover of my gameplay I'm gonna upload it and then within the next uh, week or so I'll be doing mainly videos on this and if I get any other shader graph uh, ideas then obviously I'll love those because I know most people are there for that but I thought since it's a unity tutorial channel I should actually be showing how to make stuff in unity and I'm just in love with this game right now so I think it's a good idea to actually um, you know show people how it's done and also at the end of a boss fight as you saw uh, it shows you all the statistics of that run so it's like yeah how much damage you dealt how much this that the other how much gems you earned whatever but as you see after you've defeated a boss you then go to the next element zone so over your whole run if you survive till the end you will go against all types so let's say i took a full fire build yeah i'd be good in the war zone uh, but i wouldn't be good in the oh no sorry i'd be good in the um earth zone but i wouldn't be very good in the fire zone and so on like depending on what you do and what you take it's just kind of like um in all honesty it doesn't reduce your damage to the point where you can't win uh, it's just a case of um it's much more beneficial to kind of take a spread the reason why i like lightning and earth is because uh, sorry lightning and um what's the other one uh wind is that there's no wind or lightning thing so you're not actually like super weak to them um one one other thing I forgot to mention is if you've seen Binding of Isaac, I've I've played it a bit. There are um, like angel and devil items, and they generally have trade offs. Now the devil items are argue they, they're just flat out stronger, but they always have a like downside to them, so it's sometimes not worth taking them. Now in this, there's also a thing like that. Uh, when you find the people, obviously green is merchant, purple is uh, purple is the spell people. There's actually different kinds of. Uh, red ones you can get you can get a red one that um gives you like a cursed item where you can't drop the item if you don't like the negative effect of it um the only way you can really know the effect is by you know taking it before and like looking what it does if it's your first time taking that item then you gotta you gotta risk it um there's some which like double your damage but double your damage taken there's some that like makes you deal bonus damage to bosses but also you just take more damage and there's this and there's one where it like takes off like 200 hp but it gives you like a second chance when you die and so on obviously the merchant is just generally beneficial items like health potions and like damage bonuses and whatever the demon people you don't even have to uh, for the cursed items you'd have to pay for them you just have to you know live with the with the curse and you could stack up multiple demon like the curse items and you could win your run really easily because you could be really overpowered but you've also got to like be worried about you know you might get hit once and die from like a big move because of the bonus damage taken so it's completely up to you how your run goes and there's no flat out like you can't go in with a certain build and guaranteed to win if you are lucky enough with items and relics and stuff then yeah you might be if depending on what you get offered and you know this that and the other um you can also get an item which is called like map and it shows you the whole map so you can run straight to the end of the level and just quickly get out the b the disadvantage to this is you won't be geared up as much because you can't like buy stuff but it's beneficial for quickly unlocking spells because you can gain gems run again gain gems run again and so on um but yeah there's so much in this game which we can analyze and like make and i just think it's gonna be really fun also the um bits where you fall off and die um and then like having the dashes over the gaps all that stuff We'll make everything, don't you worry. Um, or at least as much as, you know, as much as I think it's worth. Also, just because this is a 2D game doesn't mean that things I do won't apply to 3D. You know, you can just do the same thing in 3D. It's There's not much to change, really. 
like um, obviously character movement stuff. Oh, and quickly before we end, because I came across a pinata. Um, if you've ever played Diablo, this is the, kind of the equivalent of a treasure goblin. In Diablo, the treasure goblin, you have a certain amount of time to kill it before it disappears. In this, it never disappears. You just have to kill it in a certain amount of time, and if you don't, it respawns on full health. The point is you have to get a really good combo off to kill it. Now, sometimes, depending on what abilities you've taken, you might not even be able to do that. Um, now, as you see here, because I managed to kill it, it gives me a new spell for this run, but I don't have any slots, so it also lets you click and swap slots. So now I take this new water bubble move, um, and I thought it would be good to use this one because water against fire, you know, it's beneficial. So... Um, if I want to swap back, I can. But yeah, I'll also show you the whole like inventory system, swapping items, whatever. Um, now, I'm pretty close to uh, dying here, so I don't think um, there's much more to say. I might just keep talking while, until I die, because you know, I'm only on 38 HP. Um, but yeah, so I hope like from watching this video, you've like gained an interest to this game. Obviously, if you want to go look it up and buy it, it's on Steam, uh, Wizard of Legend, it's about £10 or of many dollars that is or whatever um see as you see i come back and buy a health potion before i fight because you know i need the health um so apart from that there's not much more else to say so um obviously i hope you're looking forward to this tutorial uh, if you want to join the discord server to have discussions about whatever then feel free links in the description um next weekend and every two weekends from then on we're going to be hosting like a server-wide game jam so it's just like for this server um i'll be like putting uh votes out for the topic or, like the theme and then you know on the friday night at midnight i'll release the theme people have two days to make the game publish it and then me and the other admins in the server will uh vote vote for the games so i feel that's going to be a pretty fun thing to do obviously there's no uh necessity to join there's no fee just you know do it if you want to it's good practice for game makers and it's good um it's just a good spirit for a server, you know, for everyone to be, like, coming together to make a game. Just like the normal game jams, but they're only every, like, four months. So, you know, it's, it's quite nice to have a more often server-side one, like, mini, mini uh, tournament kind of challenge. Um, as well as that, obviously, if you want to see more videos or if you've found this video, however, however you found it. Obviously, I have other Unity tutorials and other Python and whatever tutorials. So, if you want to see more of those, then obviously, liking and subscribing the videos would be nice. And also, leaving comments for what you would like to see so I can add to my list of video ideas so I can keep them coming out as regularly as they are every day or two um, and yeah I think I've mentioned everything now so uh, if I haven't got anything else more else to say thanks for watching and goodbye